Hi, and welcome back to Bill Sickler Groom. Well, it's time to have a look back on what's happened in Jordan, August, and Bill Sickler Groom. So, we had some good news. Um, new pair of fish. We had a bit of a competition. Um, we had a bit of a look about electricity and what effects that's going to have on the hobby. But let's have a look at some of the tanks and see what we've actually got going on. Well, I thought we'd start off with this tank this day, uh, this month. So this is the one that the Coruleus have gone into. So all eight of the Coruleus, they come through the quarantine okay, and they've gone into this tank. So this is the tank. It's got the newest pair of the Nekiraga Gwents, which actually did breed during August. Uh, I did have regulars off them, um, but I didn't pull any of them. So unfortunately they've all been at, probably by the Coruleus. <laughs> There's the two pair of Spilaris in here, and um, they have both been breeding actually. Um, so we had one pair that was breeding over here, and we had a few wrigglers off them. Uh, looks like they've all gone now. And I did have another pair that was actually breeding last week uh, in this little nook here. And um, I'm not sure whether they actually got to wrigglers. Yeah, this is the two pairs of Spilaris have paired off and been breeding. So this tank is full of tannins. So this is the wood that I got from the range, which is a shop in the UK, pretty similar to Target in the USA. So if you ever go into the range, if you have a look in the fish supplies, uh, you can find like this wood. So I think it was about 15 pound. And I did actually have it in soaking in the bucket for about a month, changing the water every few days. But put it in this tank, I don't know whether it's coming across on the video, but yeah, there's still lots of tannins coming off it, which can be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on what you're looking for. But anyway, that's this tank, so everything seems to be doing quite well. Carulius, they are putting on a bit of size now, and uh, yeah, they are really nice fish. Looking forward to when they, they do get a bit bigger and they actually start developing the colours. You, you see uh, the, the females actually have the, the blue in the dorsal. Can't really tell at the moment. <laughs> On to the next tank. So this is the chocolates and the Geophagus Sedimentus tank. So not much change in this one there uh, during the last month. The chocolate, they, they are it is getting quite big that one but I do think it's two females I've got in here yeah so as I say not much happening in this one not much has changed so let's uh, move on to the next one so this is the Ferrichtes Passionis uh, that won the competition about what to go into the tank. So I've not put anything else in here yet, any dividends. Um, but they actually did start breeding. So I'll put some footage in about what's been happening um, during the last couple of weeks.
Paracromus Fredistale, formerly the Lewis Sale in the Cuban Cichlid. So yeah, they're all still doing well. They are putting on quite a bit of size now, so they, yeah, I'd say, what, about seven inches? So I think I've got three males and two females, but they haven't shown any signs of breeding yet. He's a little crack of him, cute and sickly. This one, which I think is a male, tends to spend most of his time in that pot, just comes out for feeding. These ones just spend all the time chasing each other around. <laughs> the Paracromus for the starlight. So let's have a quick look at this one. So this is the Rainbow Cichlids, the, the group of those. The Thomas Cichlidus Fracky, which I think it's actually two females. Uh, talking to Graham Evans, he's been watching the videos and you know, he says unfortunately they look like two females, but still really nice fish. Starting to put on a little bit of size, getting a little bit of color. Rainbow cichlids still haven't done any breeding in this tank for a long time, but yeah, I think I'd, I do need to take a pair out and put them in a separate tank. So I might put a pair in with the uh, the Phrygis passionis. See what happens over the next few weeks. The Congo tetras. They do make really good other fish. Those they do get quite big. There is four of them in there. And a cutter eye cichlid that was actually born in this tank when I had the, the, uh, the, the breeding pair. So yeah, that, that was a, a little fry that managed to escape in between all the rocks and it grew up quite successfully. <laughs> so these are the grow outs of the chocolate cichlids and the rainbow cichlids. There's a couple of odd uh, like Neotrochilus in there. Looks like that one's gone into spawning colours. Maybe something's happening in there. Excuse the glass on this one there. <laughs> it could do with a bit of a wipe. <laughs> yeah, so this is all the youngsters I've got growing on. So if you keep an eye open for the auctions, the next Northwest Cichlid Group auction is the first Sunday in November. And that's in Rainford. I'll put the flyer up for that uh, like later on in the month, uh, towards the end of September. There's yeah, so quite a few grouts. Don't know whether you remember uh, with the chocolate cichlids. Like, I was trying for ages to actually uh, get some that I could grow on, and this was about the fourth batch uh, that these ones actually made it. So yeah, some of them getting some nice colours now. This is the uh, Amatolania uh, nanolatus, so they're growing. So you might remember I got those at the last auction, uh, they were really small. But yeah, they're growing on quite well. They must be uh, just over an inch in size now, so yeah, they'll be big enough for me to start sexing. Let's have a glare on this one. <laughs> So there's six of them all together. Hopefully there will be males and females. Hopefully with doing the video I can see them on a bigger screen and <laughs> it'd be easier to sex. The other growths that I've got, the Phrygtes macipinus, formerly the yellow otai. So yeah, there's quite a group of those, they're, they're growing on. I don't think they're going to be ready for the, um, the auction in November, but they will be for next year's probably March, March, April. So yeah, they're doing quite well. So this is the Geophagus Red Dead the Amatolania sejaica. 
and the Melon Rambo, the Madagascan Cichlid. So the smaller ones have actually come out of quarantine now, so I've put them in, in with the other group. So there's now a group of six of them. Uh, obviously you can see the bigger ones that have been in there for a while. But yeah, they've been doing really well. Doing what they seem to do, <laughs> chase each other around, eating like little pigs. No more breeding activity off the Geophagus. Or the Sajaka to be fair. <laughs> in a little bit and get a better shot. Yeah, so you can see the pinstripes starting to fall now. So that's the common name for them, the pinstripe dander. The red on the tails starting to come through really nice. The little ones. <laughs> Anyway, on to the next one. So not much left in this tank now. Uh, I think there's about eight or nine of the, the Ahar uh, Fenestratus. And I'm left with three of the Feste. So that's the three of them. Uh, there's also the original male Neotropolis Neotropolis and one of the Cutteri. That, that, that was the parents of the, the ones that have been breeding for me um, over the last couple of years. So yeah, there's not much going on in this tank to be honest. But more on that in the videos in the coming weeks. The last tank to have a look at so this is the one that's really turned into a bit of a, a dumping ground <laughs> uh, so that's the male of the uh, Pherygdes uh, Machipinus formerly the Eleotai so that's the, the, the father to, to all the babies that we were looking at before the female Spolaris that's in the back there it's gone behind the bogwood now a few uh, Amatelania minor A few of the Neotropolis Neotropolis and the Fenestratus. So they, these were, uh, believe it or not, these are the same age as the ones we were just looking at before, but these have been in a separate tank. I separated these ones out quite early, uh, probably when they were about an inch, inch and a half in size. So these have grew really well. So they were off the normal coloration Fenestratus uh, and there's one of them turned into a pink one. And some nice female laid uh, at mine right. And most of them seem to be females. And the Nicaragua Gwens, uh, a rogue Nicaragua Gwens from when I was breeding those last year. Just the one which I think is a male. So Cutteri looks like they're breeding again in here, which they always seem to have fry or, or eggs, which is quite amazing considering it's a busy time. Looks like that male minor eye has been fighting, their things look a bit battered. But that's the only male I've got in this tank. I have got one other male. So this is the last tank, so this is the, uh, the, the F1 pair of Nicaragua Gwens. This tank's looking a little bit thin as well. The other nail my my right? eye. That's on my Cichlid Tuba. 
and the Robert Stone Eye has gone a bit shy. And that's about all I've got in this tank. But again, more on what my plans are there for the next few months and the next week or so. I need to get some of those female miner I and introduce them into the same tank as this one. Maybe I'll do that with the, uh, the, the Passionis. Put a pair of mine here, I in there. The blue eyes, the topaz eyes. So good news and bad news with Passionis. Hopefully they'll breed again soon and hopefully raise some of the youngsters this time. But thanks for watching and we'll see you all on the next video.